Last year, I got my Master of Science degree in epidemiology from Harvard. And now that it's been a little bit over a year since I've graduated, I've had some time to do some reflection on my Harvard experience, which has led me to realize that there are some misconceptions about Harvard that not a lot of people realize. So today I wanted to share and debunk three common misconceptions about Harvard. Misconception number one, getting into Harvard is hard. Okay, before y'all come for me, hear me out. So in 2020, I received acceptance letters from schools like Harvard, Stanford, Yale, Columbia, Berkeley, and UCLA for various master's programs in biostatistics and epidemiology. And at the time, while I was definitely happy to have gone into every school I applied to, okay. I also knew that there was no way in hell this could have happened when I was applying to college. In fact, when I was applying to college, I only applied to one Ivy League because there was really no point in shooting my shot when I had no chance. And no is not a self-limiting belief. I would truly was just being realistic. And unsurprisingly, I was waitlisted. I feel like at the undergrad level, getting accepted to all the Ivy Leagues you apply to would warrant at least like a local newspaper article. But for me, I just got a congratulations balloon from my mom. But I think that makes sense, right? I'm not butthurt about it. I actually think it's something that is worth sharing because at least from my personal experience, I don't think a lot of people fully realize just how big of a university Harvard really is. Like Harvard isn't just one school. It's a university with 13 different schools, but most of the time we only ever hear about the most competitive and prestigious of them, including Harvard College, Harvard Medical School, Harvard Business School and Harvard Law School. So it makes sense that if your only perception of Harvard is these four schools, then you would think that getting into Harvard is fucking difficult. <laughs> and rightfully so. Harvard College has a 3.4% acceptance rate. Harvard Medical School has a 1.78% acceptance rate. Harvard Business School, 13%, and Harvard Law School, 10%. But where I think the misconception comes into play is when people extrapolate the competitiveness of these four schools to the other nine less well-known schools. And in no way do I mean for this to be negative, but if you look at the acceptance rates, you can see what I mean. So take for instance, my alma mater, the Harvard Chan School of Public Health. Health. The SM or Master of Science program in epidemiology, aka my degree, has a 28% acceptance rate. The MPH or Master of Public Health program, another popular degree from HSPH, has a 49% acceptance rate. And again, this isn't to bash on anybody or say that anyone who attended a Harvard school with a higher double digit acceptance rate aren't deserving of the recognition that comes with their accomplishment. Instead, I just wanted to tell the rest of the story because when people say, that getting into Harvard is hard or that Harvard is extremely selective, that's not necessarily the whole picture. And without knowing the rest of the story, this belief alone might dissuade you from applying to Harvard in the first place because you think there's no shot you'll get in. When in reality, depending on the school and program you're applying to, you might have a better chance than you think. Misconception number two, the education at Harvard is world-class. So you would think that to maintain the level of prestige that Harvard has, Harvard would need to hire the best of the best faculty members and provide the best of the best education. But unfortunately, that's not always the case. So let me give you the tea. <laughs> I know this one professor who would actually forget to come to class and teach on a regular basis and students would literally have to go to his office to remind him to come teach. I also had another professor who would just read his slides word for word, which not only made me question why I was attending lecture in the first place, but it also meant that I had to supplement my learnings by heavily relying on the teaching assistants and watching YouTube, which, you know, made me question if I really got a Harvard degree or if it was a YouTube university degree. <laughs> and while I did encounter some really great professors, hopefully you can understand why I was a little disappointed in the fact that I was paying over $100,000 for what was supposed to be a world-class education. But ultimately, I came to accept the fact that it is what it is. It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. And actually, I guess it kind of makes sense that you encounter bad professors at Harvard because just like any of the other Ivy Leagues or top national universities, Harvard is still a research institution as opposed to a liberal arts college. And so what that means is for many professors, their priority is research because at these research institutions, a lot of professors want to get tenure. It's 
effectively academia's version of getting the best promotion you can get. And the decision to give professors tenure or not heavily favors a professor's research experience rather than their teaching experience. And then once professors actually become tenured, then there is even less of an incentive to be a good teacher because being tenured means you have job security for life. You cannot get fired no matter how shitty your course evaluations are. So for this reason, many of my favorite professors at Harvard were not professors at all, but actually lecturers. These are people who might also have a job outside of Harvard, who are less engaged with research and who are not part of the tenure system. So their sole motivation to teach is because, well, they want to teach. Whereas on the flip side, you have professors who truly only care about their research and just have to teach out of obligation. I suspect that this might be the case with the first professor I mentioned who forgets to come to class because his research is truly the best in his field despite students severely disliking his class. But anyway, my point is at any school, especially at research institutions like Harvard, there will always be good and bad educators. And being a good professor does not always mean being a good teacher or good educator. Misconception number three, your life is set once you go to Harvard. So I admit this was partially part of my naive and wishful thinking, but before I went to Harvard, I assumed that once you go to Harvard, life would just become so much easier and opportunities would just be overflowing as if the fucking gates of heaven just opened up with a beaming ray of sun. <laughs> I truly thought that if you had Harvard on your resume, recruiters would just automatically give you a job interview. And if you had Harvard in your Hinge bio, bitches would just be lining up. Bruh. But after graduating from Harvard and after meeting Harvard grads at both the undergrad and grad level, I realized that everybody is still out here grinding for sure. For me, when I was trying to exit consulting and break into product management, I don't think anybody gave a shit that I went to Harvard because your girl was getting rejected left and right. And while I acknowledge that Harvard has definitely opened doors to opportunities that I otherwise would not have had, it's not like my life became that much better just because I have a diploma from Harvard. And as one anonymous Harvard College alum said, a key only opens doors. It doesn't help you once you're inside. And Harvard is really just like that. If we take a look at the data on graduation outcomes, the numbers seem relatively promising. For example, if we take a look at the median salaries after graduation, Harvard College grads are making roughly 80K, public health grads are making roughly 96K, business school alums are at 175K, and law school grads are at 205. And this makes sense because as we said, Harvard does open up great opportunities. However, it's important to remember that there's a lot that cannot be captured with these data, whether that be how these alumni are doing after their first job or how their mental well-being is or how they're doing in their relationships with their friends and family. And anecdotally, there's plenty of Harvard grads who are going Going through their own struggles just like anyone else. So Harvard is most definitely not a guarantee for success and that includes not only academic and career success but also emotional, physical, and financial success. So that wraps up the three misconceptions about Harvard that I wanted to share which again is not to say that there isn't a little bit of truth in each of them but hopefully this video was able to shed light on a different perspective from what you may have originally thought. If you enjoyed watching this video please let me know in the comments below and feel free to like and subscribe if you went to Harvard, let me know what your thoughts are. And if you didn't go to Harvard, let me know if you thought any of these misconceptions were true. And I'll see you next time. Bye!